welcome to this month's Wild World of Wounds. This month, erythrasma. Sounds like I'm lisping, but I'm not. It's called erythrasma. And what is it? Well, let's talk about it. Erythrasma. It's a superficial skin infection caused by Carinobacterium minutissimum. I'm probably butchering that name, but Carinobacterium minutissimum. Gram-positive, non-spore-forming bacillus. Now, when you're looking at this, you may say, wow, this looks like a uh, dermatophyte or fungal infection, yeast, but this is actually a bacterial infection that can look a lot like a fungal infection, and it's actually quite common. How common? Well, it, in one study, greater than 50% incidence in soldiers. Another, they found an incidence of 20% of patients seen in a dermatology clinic, so it's actually quite common. Higher risk in immunocompromised patients and those, those with increased moisture uh, in the folds of the skin, so diabetics, elderly, obesity, and tropical climates are all situations where you'll have an increased risk of erythrasma. So what does it look like? Well, it looks a lot like a fungal infection. It can involve the area between the digits of the, t uh, of the foot. Uh, it could be in the groin, in the axilla. Erythrasma is the most common cause of bacterial infection between the toes of the feet. So the intradigital form, uh, this form usually presents a scaling or maceration between the toes, often between the fourth and fifth toe. It can be asymptomatic or pruritic and can occur with a dermatophyte or candida infection. They aren't mutually exclusive and they can coexist. The intratriginous form is uh, between skin folds. You get an erythematous patch and then plaques that develop. It can turn brown and develop a fine scale, as you can see here, a beautiful example of that fine scale brownish patch in the axilla. There's a disciform version that doesn't have to be restricted to the intratriginous areas and can be elsewhere on the skin. And the genital and perianal version which is uh, often uh, overlooked as a cause of chronic paritis ani. And it uh, can also involve the vulva and be misdiagnosed as a candida infection. So how do you diagnose this? Well, you, you diagnose it with this uh, very elegant test with your Woods lamp. So first it has the typical appearance, but then uh, to help confirm the diagnosis, it will fluoresce a coral red color with the Woods lamp. And the one thing that's important to remember is you can get a false negative with the Woods lamp where it won't fluoresce if the patient had just bathed that same day that you're trying to do the Woods lamp test. You still want to make sure you don't have a co-infection of a dermatophytes, so you still may want to do a KOH exam. Gram staining of the skin scrapings will show gram positive filaments and rods. Uh, you can also culture this. You can see it if you stain it on biopsy, but let the lab know that you're looking for this organism if you are in fact wanting to stain it or um, culture it so they can use the right type of media, but usually culture is not required. So treatment. Uh, treatment can be topical or oral. Recurrence is common and it helps to try and keep those intertriginous areas dry. An oral option for widespread disease is clarithromycin or erythromycin. And then for more local disease, you can do topical clinda or topical erythro. You can even do topical azoles and benzyl peroxide. Now, since azoles will also work for uh, your tinnias, this may be a good choice when it's difficult to distinguish between the erythrasma and a tinea or co-infection of a tinea infection. So as long as we're talking about woods lamps, what else are woods lamps used for in derm? Well, they're good for uh, helping to identify tinea capitis due to a couple specific forms of microsporum. But unfortunately, not all tinea capitis are caused by these forms. Only about, actually less than 20% of tinea capitis in the U.S. are caused by these types of microsporum. But if you use your wood lamp, woods lamp and it fluoresces a blue-green color, that will help in the diagnosis of tinea capitis. But a negative does not rule it out. 
You can also use your woods lamp to fluoresce uh, the urine and it should change a pink or orange red color to aid in the diagnosis of porphyria cutanea tarda, which often presents as these ulcerations on patients' hands. And there's a beautiful picture of it. And then finally, woods lamp is used for erythrasma due to Carinobacterium minutismum. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this month's Wild World of Wounds, Erythrasma. Look for it. It's out there. We'll see you next month. Bye for now.